all of you this evening. And uh, I want you to understand the core, the core, the core of why we are here. While we appreciate the opportunity to have some fun and to give out prizes and to give out food and to celebrate, this is all about increasing our awareness and our engagement in the academic success and progress of our students. That is the most important thing to me as a superintendent. And I believe I share the same sentiment. I see one of our board members, Dr. Sandra Woodford, would you wave your hand, please? Let's give our board member a round of applause. We appreciate you being out this evening. And I know we share that exact same sentiment. So I wanna just talk to you about five minutes, that's it, for about what it means to be together for our children. So we're gonna flip this slide. You may not be able to see it, but I want to make sure you understand what it means for me when we talk about together. Because I understand that one of the most important things for us as adults is if we have children we care for, it's for us, first of all, to have it together. Would you agree or disagree? Like I, as a man, have to have it together for my children. And as a superintendent, I have to have it together for this district. And I would argue the same thing for each and every one of you. The next thing that has to happen, if we really want to experience together, is that now you and I and the school and you have to get a good relationship going with each other. I don't know about you, but if I drop my child off somewhere and I leave that child for eight hours, I would want to have a great relationship with that organization. So I really want to push on us today as we think about how we can increase the quality of our relationship together. Let me let you in on something if you didn't know it. We love your children. Let me say it again. We love your children. Now let, me, let me flip that. We love our children. We love them. Which is why every single day we are working as hard as we possibly can so that our, so our relationship has to be strong. So once we have it together as individuals and we come together with a great relationship, then and only then can you and I work together. Now, instead of us just letting the back to school rallies come and go, we decided to bring it right back around. So now we're back out here with the same back to school energy. You know why? Because our kids go to school every single day. We are now 38 days in to the school year. We have 78.889% of the school year left before we send them back to y'all to the house to eat up all your food in the refrigerator. But until then, we have a lot of time to get a lot of great things done. But what I want to tell you is that we cannot get it done without you. So what's my message this evening? We need you. Look at somebody next to you and say, he needs you. Look at somebody else say, they need you. We need you, we need you, we need you. So this is not really a time for me to encourage. It is time, it's a time to ask. And if I didn't have bad knees, I'd get down on my knees to let you know how badly we need each and every one of you to keep up with the academic success and the progress of your student. I'm gonna help you out this evening though. Next slide. So I wanna talk about academic awareness because what we wanna do is to foster a greater sense of awareness with you. And that is those things we know that you need to not only know, but keep up with as much as possible so that you are crystal clear on how your student is performing. It cannot just be, how was your day? That's a great starter. But I want that conversation to get deeper than that. What did you learn today? And they tell you something, ma'am. What math? Show me. What did you read? A book. Show me the book. Read the book too. Like, like I need us to get to a space where we ask questions of our students because if I drop my child off somewhere eight hours, I wanna know what's going on. So what I'm asking you first of all to do is to help us by deepening your level of involvement in what you ask your child on a daily, on a weekly, and on a monthly basis. So to today is about increasing our awareness. And I have something for you in just a minute. Next slide. I wanna talk about these four A's. The first one is one of the main reasons we're here tonight, and that is awareness. I'm gonna ask you a question, not for you to answer it, but just think about this. Are you currently aware of the academic progress of your child after 38 days? And I would say if you are not aware, that's okay, because we want to empower you tonight to think differently about how aware you can be all the time. It is my wish that every single student that walks into one of our schools they walk out successful, as successful as they possibly can be, with no barriers stopping them from the next grade level. But one of the things we see right now 
are success challenges, and part of it is something that you and I own. And that is making sure that every single day is a successful learning day for every single child. Learning. So I've been inside the schools, I'll continue to come inside the schools, and all I'm focused on is what learning is taking place for these children right here who one day will be taking care of you. I don't know about you, but if they're gonna be taking care of me one day, I want them to be the smartest, the brightest, the most capable, the most qualified individuals we can put out into the world. And right now is the time for us to make sure that that happens. So awareness is number one. But what we need to move to is now, uh, go, go back, go back, go back, go back, is assessing. So now I'm aware of where my child is. Now let me take time to assess what they need. Let me ask the questions and then make sure that I work with the school in order for my child to get what they need. So awareness is first, and then we move to assessment. But then we need to do, after what we need to do then is analyze some things. I wanna ask y'all to do something for me. I want you to take time to analyze the learning environment in your home. I'll say that again. I want you to take time to analyze the learning environment in your home. I personally believe every single student needs a space and a place, whether it was the kitchen table like it was for me, or in their room without the TV on, they need a space inside that home where they can sit and continue the learning process. I guarantee you it will accelerate the, the, the time that it takes for your child to get from one level to the next. So I want you to analyze what's happening inside the home, but also analyze the relationship that we have. Let me be honest with you. We don't have perfect relationships with everybody. We're gonna own some of that. And I wanna own it. And if there are some relationship challenges in terms of you and the school, we need to talk about that and get that out of the way so all of our students can, can, can get to the next level, which will move us to action. Tonight is about action. And part of the action I want you to take it's twofold. I want you to walk away tonight with a higher level of awareness in terms of what you need to know for, you, for your children. And I want you to walk away having every single tool that you can sign up for to ensure that you can stay connected. So I want to call out one table real quick. This table's over here. This table is in place to sign you up right here on the spot for Parent Portal to keep up with attendance with behavior, with grades, with everything. It'll go on your phone. Every time your child is absent or misses a class or a grade comes in, your phone will let you know. What a powerful tool. Real quickly, raise hands if you're in Parent Portal. Parent Portal. Well, this is the Parent Portal crew right here, okay. That will work. Give yourselves a hand for that. Fantastic. I wanna take it to the next level though, because if you have Parent Portal, I'm wondering how much it is influencing your awareness, your assessment of where your child is, your ability to analyze what you see, and then some action. So with that said, next slide. I want to give you the top five things, all of my kindergarten, pre-kindergarten through fifth grade parents. Where are you? Just say, I'm here. All right, y'all always show up. I love it. It's a beautiful thing. All right, so listen. I want y'all to repeat after me. These, among other things, are the top five things you need to keep up with all the time with your students. Number one, Lexile. Number two, end of grade test scores. Let me stop right there real quick. You know we took the end of grade exam this past May. Not gonna ask you to raise your hands, but do you know how your child performed? What, did they perform at a beginning level, a developing level, a proficient level, or a distinguished level? And my next question would be this. If you know how your child performed, then what were your next steps with the school as we continue this journey? for our students. Like those are the kinds of things we need to get to the place where we're asking. All right, so what did I say first? First one was what? And Lexile has to do with your what ability? Oh, look at this crowd right here. Your reading ability. One of the most important things. Can I take a commercial break real quick? Can I say, say, say yes? All right. Dun, 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 dun. All right, we have, too far. We have a new resource in place. We have an artificial intelligence reading coach called Amira, available for every single student to help increase a student's reading fluency and understanding so that they can become the greatest readers possible. It is currently available. So I want you to know that your child, not only we can take it now from go somewhere and read to now 
get with a mirror, a mirror, and read and let a mirror coach you. Like literal coaching. How many of y'all have been on chats on the on, on asking questions on the on the phone and it's not a person, it's somebody, it's some artificially intelligent person? Now we have that for reading. So you're gonna hear more about that, but it's one of those ways we can help increase the Lexile score. What was the first one again? What was the second one? The third one, attendance. I wanna let you know we have a real attendance issue with a lot of students. So what I wanna know tonight, if you have any attendance challenges, it's important for us to know tonight what those challenges are so that we can have students in every single seat, every single day. Number four, discipline and what we call our PBIS data. That's positive behavior interventions and supports data. Like we need you to know how many times your child has had discipline challenges and what those challenges are. But then we need that to go back to the four A's, needs to move to action. And then number five, we, what, what we call our STAR performance data. STAR is the way that we assess our students day in and day out, week after week, to help us understand how they're progressing. It's very important for you to keep up with those. So I want to ask you, if you will, write down those five. And I want that to become your lens in terms of what you keep up with. And if you have any questions about what the data means, it's as simple as going to the school. All right, sixth through eighth grade parents, just say I'm here. Yeah. All right, great, great, great. Let's go through your five. Guess what's at the top of the list? Say it. Lexile. Everybody say Lexile. Number two, end of, grade te end of grade test scores. Good, you didn't stutter like I did. Thank you. They need to know those. You need to know how your child performed this past May because that's a baseline for what we're going to build moving up. Number three, attendance. Number four, discipline PBIS data. Discipline PBIS data. And then number five is the star performance data again. Middle school parents, I need you to write these down. Because what's most important for me as your superintendent is for you to help us in terms of you keeping up with the academic performance and success of your students. Now, I understand there might not be a lot of high school uh, parents out here, but high school parents, say I'm here. Oh, okay, I got a few, great. Now, can I let y'all in on, on a formula? Listen to this formula. 1,300 on the SAT and 3.8 grade point average or higher is almost guaranteed to get you a full scholarship anywhere in the United States of America. Okay. I'll say it again. 1,300 on the SAT and at least a 3.8 grade point average is guaranteed to get you a full academic scholarship to almost anywhere in the United States of America. I say that to the elementary and middle school parents because you need to write that information down because it's good to know that. But let's go through yours. Number one for our parents. Of high school students, GPA. Somebody yell out, what does GPA stand for? Grade point. Grade point average. That is something that will carry your child all the way up to their post-secondary options. Number two, course completion and credits. So let me tell you one of the mistakes a lot of parents make. They get to high school and they say, my child's supposed to be in their right grade, supposed to be in the 10th grade, supposed to be in the 11th grade, supposed to be in the 12th grade. Course credits drives what grade you are in. As a matter of fact, uh, Dr. Dupree, when did the progress reports go out? Two weeks ago. How, who knew? Ah, oh, great, 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 great. So kids already have progress reports for the year. We need you to get that progress report and check out their grades. And number three and four, you already know what they are, attendance. We have discipline PBIS data. And then for our high schools, we have end of course test scores. What's my big point with sharing these with you this evening? There's nothing more important to me as your superintendent, that we work with you to make sure that you fully understand all the time your academic success and progress for each and every one of your students. So I'm telling you, I need you in that space. And my big dream is to get every single parent all the time in the know in terms of how your child is doing for those 180 days. And imagine if you will, you and I working together for 100 consistent days, I can guarantee you we can move some mountains, okay? I want everybody to make some noise if you want your child to live with you for the rest of your life. Well, well uh, I'm gonna say it again. Make some noise if you want your child to live with you for the rest of your life. And the children scream no. So guess what, if that be the case, let's work together now. 
so that when it's time for them to leave and visit for Thanksgiving, Christmas, some weekends, when time permits, you can pat yourself on the back knowing that you sent your child out to live a great and a fantastic life. I think that's all I have. What's the next slide? So that's it. We need you. And we need all of you. So do me a favor before you leave tonight. Do me a favor. Please, if you need to update any information in terms of uh, Infinite Campus and sign in the parent portal, please go to this table. Give me just a minute and give me a round of applause for all of the partners who came out to camp out and give you great information. Please give a round of applause.